I want to share with you how I survived the crisis that I went through, which was a health and a financial crisis. And I hope these things help you too. <sighs> Playing the household hustle. Let's be clear here, people. And this is not one of my sexier moments. When you are in a situation where you have no money coming in, you start playing the household hustle. And you're saying, what the hell does that mean? You start asking yourself the critical bills. I mean, excuse me, though. You start asking yourself the critical questions. Like what? You'll say, okay, what is the latest I can pay this light bill before they start sending me a disconnect notice? What is the latest I can pay this water bill without them sending a disconnect notice? What is the latest I can pay my rent um, until they send me an eviction notice? Or what is the latest I can pay my rent? Um, when does the eviction notice thing kick in? Like for instance, in Florida, I was I owned a house. The way it works for mortgages back then is most banks knew that uh, you're in a situation where if you miss three payments, they automatically sent you to foreclosure, automatically sent you to foreclosure. So, and, and they would tell me, I would talk to them on the phone, they would tell me, as long as you don't get three months behind, you won't go into foreclosure. Because I was calling and telling them, saying, I am in a dire financial strain. I said, what do I need to do? And they literally said, the systems that they have in place to help people who are in financial need don't kick in until you're in foreclosure. And they were like, don't get in foreclosure. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? What it means is two things. One, once you're in foreclosure, then we have to evaluate whether you qualify for a plan so we can take you out of that foreclosure and give you some more time. The problem that you run across is that if you don't qualify, then we have to then push it into the legal realm. And so, you know, so there's like these three tracks. There was the three months, the foreclosure with the bank, the foreclosure in court. And when you're in court, there was still more remedies. So I was looking at those things strategically. But the first thing they told me was if you can do whatever possible to not go into foreclosure, if you can make sure you have three, that you, you know, reset the clock. And this was them telling me this. They were like literally saying, now, and I don't want anybody to go out and do what I did. I did this because I had no choice because I didn't have any money coming in. And I had, in my mind, I was freaking. And they were like, listen, as long as you make sure you don't get three months behind, and so I ended up doing that. So I would pay very close attention to that clock. And I would be pressing, pressing, pressing. Because every now and then the government would send out like one little check here and there. And that would give me the ability to get caught up like a month or two. And so that's why I call it the household hustle. Because you're going to do the same thing. You're going to look at your bills and say, what is the drop dead longest I can make? If I can wait, even though I know I have to pay my bill within a month. And, and it's like, well... It's now past due. How much past due do you have to wait until it kicks in for you to do something before something negative really happens? That's why I call it the household hustle because you're hustling your bills around in such a way so you can keep going before things get crucial. That's why you need to make sure if you're renting, contact your landlord. If you have a mortgage, contact your mortgage company. If you have light bill, water bill, cable bill, any of those, call those providers because that's what I had to do to figure out how to keep them at bay and keep things going until I saw some breathing.